Thank you, Jesus. Jeremiah chapter 29. To the Lord be the glory. Thank you, Jesus. Jeremiah 29. Very familiar passage of scripture. Hallelujah. Let's take a look at verse 10 through 12. And it reads, For thus saith the Lord, that after 70 years be accomplished at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word toward you, and causing you to return to this place. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, said the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Then shall ye call upon me, and you shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. Let's go down to verse 13 and 14. And ye shall seek me and find me, when you shall search for me with all your heart. And I will be found of you, saith the Lord. And I will turn away your captivity, and I will gather you from all the nations and from all the places, whether I have driven you, saith the Lord, and I will bring you again into the place whence I called you to be carried away captive. Just for a few moments of my time, Missionary Randolph, I want to minister from this thought on today, no more repeated cycles. Come on, say that with me. Say, no more repeated cycles. These passages of scripture that I have read to you today are very familiar verses that has literally been verses that has encouraged the believers along the way to know that God has not forgotten about us and that God has a plan to prosper and to keep us and to give us a hope and a future. And I'm grateful today because even though I have made many mistakes in my life, Amen. Not that I'm proud of them, but even though I have made many mistakes, God has kept me in my mess. Can anybody testify today that God will keep you in your mess? Hallelujah. It's because God has a plan to bring you to an expected end. Our foundational verse for this particular lesson says, For I know, and I'm reading this version from the NIV, it says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. And so Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11 was written to the Jewish people who were in exile in Babylon. They had been taken from their homeland and were living under the rule of the Babylonian Empire. This period of exile was a result of their disobedience to suffering and uncertainty for them. In the preceding chapters, the prophet Jeremiah had been warning the people about false prophets like Hananiah, who falsely claimed that the exile would be short-lived. Contrary to these false hopes, Jeremiah conveyed God's message to the people that the exile will last for 70 years. In this text in Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11, it's a message of hope and reassurance because as a people, we need a hope and we need a reassurance at time that God makes no mistakes and he has not left us nor has he escaped us, but yet he is always there watching over us to perform his word. God was telling the exiled Jews that despite their current hardships that he had not abandoned them, but instead he had a plan for their future, one that included prosperity and hope. And I don't know where you may have been in your life or where you have grown up, but uh, it doesn't matter where you've grown up because it's not where you're from, it's where you're at. And even though I come, I'm that boy, amen, my family bloodline comes from out that mighty nine. Y'all know the saying, I'm from that mighty nine and I don't mind dying, you know. And there was out the desire project, just because you may have been out the project does not mean that God cannot take you to an elevated place. Just because you came out the hood does not mean that you cannot speak with the proper grammar. Just because you came out the hood does not mean you can't have a great education. Just because you came out the hood does not mean that God cannot bless nor stop his favor from flowing in your life. And so many of us today have been dealing with repeated cycles. 
Because life often feels like a series of repeated patterns. You know, it seems like you come out of one maze and then it seems like the same thing constantly repeats itself over and over again. When we find ourselves facing the same challenges, making the same mistakes and experiencing the same disappointments, but God has a different plan for us. He desires to break these cycles and lead us into a future filled with hope and with a purpose. Repeated cycles can be exhausting and disheartening. They can make us feel stuck as if we're not going to come out of this. It can make us feel like we're going to be dealing with this thing always. And you know when you go through a hard time in your life, sometimes it feels like the cycle will never end. Your grandmother went through this problem. Now the next generation is going through this problem. And it seems like it keeps going and keeps going and keeps going and keeps going. And you're at a point in your mind, when is this thing going to be over? But I come to let you know today that God has a plan for you. He desires to break these cycles and lead us into a future filled with hope, purpose, and great prosperity. The good news is that God is in the business of transformation. That's why when I was growing up, I, I, I love playing with love playing with transformers. I love playing with transformers because even though transformers was in uh, in one in one light and made in one image, after you put all of the different transformers together, they became a mighty force that could not be stopped. Yeah. And I'm trying to tell you today that God has called you to be a transformer. Why? Because He wants to transform your way of thinking yeah. so that He can get His purpose and His plan fulfilled in your life. But oftentimes it's by the things that we have seen with our eyes, the things that we have heard, the disappointments that we have felt make us feel like we are not going to make it. You've gone to interview after interview and it seems like nobody's trying to give you the job that you feel like you qualify for. It seems like sometimes your children is acting crazy and deranged and acting off the chain and you want to go upside their head. But I'm trying to tell you today that God has a plan with you in mind. So in order for us to get to this place that God is trying to bring us to to break these cycles, hallelujah, it must be done with the word of God. Because God's word is filled with all kinds of promises of deliverance and new beginnings. Anybody need a new beginning in here today? Hallelujah. Anybody need, need a reset, need a, a fresh start? You know, I'm, I'm, from, I'm, from that, I'm from that generation where we played the Nintendo. I ain't talking about the Super Nintendo. I ain't, I ain't, talk, I ain't talking about uh, uh, PlayStation 5 and all those different things like that. I'm talking about the old school Nintendo with the gray stick and those two, two red buttons on there. And I can remember when my mom first bought, when she first bought that Nintendo for Christmas and we was playing Super Mario Brothers and we had, man, we was glued to the TV and we had the, had the joystick in our hand. And every time they tried to jump, you had the remote control and you doing like this. And you doing that. Why? Because you feel like you are helping the process. But the truth of the matter is, you don't have to move your hand to the right or move your hand to the left. All you got to do is press the button. And I came to let somebody know in order to break a repeated cycle in your life, all you got to do is press the button. Press the button and put a praise on it. Press the button and put prayer on it. Press the button and ask God to show up and show out in your life and give him the glory for the things that he's doing. Raise your hand and shout hallelujah. Oftentimes I would be playing the game and then I would I would be messing up. And if, if you was a gamer any length of time, then you know when you get to when you get to uh, level three on the board and then the, the ducks are coming down the stairs and then you can duck on the duck head and then it's a glitch in the system where you're getting turtle extras. Yeah. And then you just bouncing on the duck, bouncing on the duck, bouncing on the duck, bouncing on the duck. I ain't rapping now, but bouncing on the duck, bouncing on the duck, bouncing on the duck. And the next thing you know, all those extra lives just start bouncing and bouncing. Bouncing and bouncing and bouncing and bouncing. And the enemy has a plan to take you out. The enemy has a plan to say, no, you're not going to make it to this point. But every time you 
put up praise on it. You keep bouncing on his head, bouncing on his head, bouncing on his head. And God said that I have not forgotten about you. I have not forgotten my plan for your life. And I don't care what the enemy try to bring against you. I don't care what the next say. say. I got a plan for your life. So God is with us to provide wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Because it's the wisdom and the knowledge and understanding of God that's going to get me out of what I am currently dealing with. And so in order to break a repeated cycle, you got to recognize the cycles that you are in. Yeah, when you look at when you look at your blood, when you look at your bloodline, you gotta look at where the enemy has been defeating your bloodline over and over and over and over again. And then once you find out how he has been defeating your bloodline, now you know you got something to do to break the curse. Yes, yes. You know people in your bloodline, they only make it to high school, they never go to college, and then you got that one person who breaks the cycle and they go to college. That just makes everybody go crazy. Why? Because you just expose life on a whole nother level. Or when you got your family members who have been living on government assistance all their life, and then you get that person in the bloodline who going about the house, you're going crazy. Why? Because now you feel that you are able to accomplish more. The Bible is filled with all kind of promises that God wants to use to bring the past his will in our lives but we got to trust him in the process we got to trust him that he's with us and ready to provide the wisdom and the power we need to break free but it's only through the word of God that you will find the hope and the determination to break the chains that bind us Breaking free from repeated cycles also involves a change of mindset. You can't act the same way you act when you're in the hood. Once you get out, you got to act differently. Why? Because so many times, and you can, you can see there are so many areas that have been gentrified. Hallelujah. And you can see where you can see where uh, great prosperity is and where people are trying to level you up and take you from out of your environment and bring you into something new. If your mindset has not been changed or conditioned, you're going to bring your old way of doing things back into a new situation. And now we've got a repeated cycle. Generations and generations of people always going through divorce. You got to say, well, we're going to be the generation that's going to break that curse. Yeah, I don't, I don't care. I don't care when you messed up. I don't care when you failed. I don't care if you've been one who's gone through a divorce before. You can say, today this thing stops with me. Why? Because I'm making deliberate actions in order to become the best that God has for my life. You got to get to a point where you're letting go of past failures and embrace the new identity we have in Christ. With God, all things are possible and he's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask or think according to the power that works on the inside of us. And so breaking free from repeated cycles requires action. Y'all ever heard lights, camera, action? Yeah, that's going to be the story of your life. Because y'all know how they say back in the day, woman, now how do y'all, when you make a change in your life and God starts shifting gears, hallelujah, baby, get your camera out, take all the pictures you want, take all the screenshots you want, because the person I used to be, I'm not that person no more. Why? Because God has placed me into a new found place of authority. Isn't it something how people will always remember your past? And God said, oh, I forgave. I didn't forgave them. Hallelujah. He said, I don't, even, I don't even remember that. But people say, oh, yeah, you did this and you did that. And I, I go and I tell them, yeah, I've done it. I got the t-shirt and everything. Hallelujah. I got the hat. I got all the shoes to go with it. Yeah, I did it. I was guilty. I was wrong. But I'm not that person no more. Girl, he ain't no good. He may not have been good to you, but he's good for somebody else. Oh, Oh, Pastor, you about to get yourself in your trouble today. Hallelujah. Girl, he ain't, he ain't, he ain't no good. He just a liar, a cheater, a deceiver, heartbreaker. And I don't want you back in my life. So I'm taking the house, the car, the kids, and the dog. I want it all. You're nothing. But I know the song. Y'all acting like I'm the only one listening to the radio. 
They may have messed up with them, but now they got a real one, baby. Why? Because a real woman will make you better. A real woman will make you stronger. I gotta clean up what I messed up. Started my life over again. Yeah, and that's how it be. God hit that reset button on your life. And people trying to figure out how you can be so committed to another, but you wasn't committed over there. It's because I changed partners. My mindset has changed. I'm seated in a new place of authority. Then I gotta embrace God's promises. That's point number two. God's word is filled with promises of deliverance in the beginning. He assures us that we are not alone in our struggles, that he is always with us, ready to provide wisdom and power we need to break free. Yes. His word is always there, giving us passages to come out of a rough place. Yes, and we can see throughout the Bible of people who made all kind of failures and made all kind of mistakes. But I come to let somebody know that you are not the mistakes that you have made. Amen. Yeah, you can be free from the mistakes you have made. Sometimes you got to deal with the residue of the mistakes you've made, but all you got to do is keep living and watch God change the narrative. Yes, mm -hmm. Embracing God's promises requires faith and trust. Yes, we must believe that God is who he says he is and that he will do what he has promised. This means letting go of past failures and embracing a new identity we have in Christ. It means believing that we are more than conquerors than him who loved us. And as we stand on God's promises, we will find the strength and the power to break free. Yes, Thank you, God. I don't want you to raise your hand today, but there are some of you in the building in here today, you was behind bars. Yeah, I was, I, was behind, I was behind bars, not because I committed a crime. Well, I did commit a crime because the license was suspended. <laughs> Yeah, I broke, I broke the crime, hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, I, they, and they handcuffed me, put me in the car. Hallelujah, missionary deal. And they brought me down to OPP and they, they put me in the cell and they closed the doors. And I said, Lord, help me in here. And they had so many people in the room. And I'm like, how am I supposed to use the restroom? They got the man sitting on the toilet, Jesus. <laughs> People laying all on the floor because population is so deep. How am I going to get out of this? And God said, watch how my favor work. And his favor work, I didn't even stay up in that 24 hours. And then the second time I went, I said, Lord, 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 help me, help me, help me. Jesus, I'm going to jail with a clergy collar on. Yeah, I'm on the way to the front tower for a jurisdictional meeting. So to the bird come get your son out of jail. Yes, sir. And I found faith when they let me out again. Yes, but I still ain't take care of them license and they pulled me over again. Oh, I said, Lord Jesus, yes, yes. A repeated offender. I'm leaving the church for choir rehearsal. Coming, going get some Popeye's chicken, driving in Atlanta, and nine cars pulled me over like I was a convicted felon. Step out the car, I said, please don't do this to me, please. <laughs> Brother Cameron pointing all kinds of hands and fingers toward the people. I'm like, Lord Jesus, please don't do this. Don't do this in front of my children. And they brought me down to the jailhouse. Hallelujah. And they let me stay on the phone the whole time I was in there. And I still didn't get it right. They took me to jail again. <laughs> When they took me to jail again, the police officer took me home while he went home and made some lunch. And then came back and he left me in the car, then came back with his lunch, and then brought me down to the place, and then sat me at his desk. And I sat there at the desk and I was on the phone with Lady Moore the whole time I was in there. And I was like, I didn't do nothing this time. I got everything right. This is a mistake. There's an error in the system. Hallelujah. But even though I was caught up in my situation for something minor, you've been caught up in your situation and you've been stuck in that repeated cycle for so long and you're trying to break free. You're trying to figure out how am I going to get out of this? And God says, I got you. So every time I would drive down the street and I would see the police, my legs just start shaking. 
and it just starts shaking. And I said, honey, they're about to get me again. They're about to get me again. I said, get your daddy on the phone. Get your daddy on the phone. They're about to get me again. Lord, please don't do this. And then when the Lord got me straight, straight, and I started driving down the street, and I noticed my legs wasn't shaking no more. Why? Because my mindset had changed. I got my business right. And now I'm rolling, hallelujah, and I see the state trooper on the side of me, and I'm waving my hand. And then sometime I roll down my window and turn on the music up. Hallelujah. And Kirk Franklin said, you think gospel music has gone too far, but you got another level, brother. Stump, and I'm up there and I'm bumping my love music and I'm praising. Why? Because I have broke a repeated cycle. You don't understand how cycles come to keep you in bondage and how cycles come to keep you stuck in a situation. But when you get to a place where you say, God, it's no more I but the Christ that lives on the inside of me. He whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Somebody shout, I'm free. Praise the Lord, I'm free. No longer bound, no more chains holding me. My soul is resting. It's such a blessing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, I'm free. And then lastly, you've got to take action. Somebody say take action. When you take actions from these repeated cycles, now you are saying that I am going to break the curse off the bloodline. You're saying that now I'm getting ready to pop the chains and what used to have me bound is not going to have me bound no more. And so many of us have been bound in our mind because we have seen other people go through what we've gone through. And it seems like our faith is going to be their faith, not F-A-I-T-H. F-A-T-E. We think that our faith is going to be their faith. They didn't make it, so I must not going to be able to make it. They died of this condition, so I means I must going to die according to this condition. But no, you got to get to a point and say, I'm going to live and not die to declare the works of the Lord. You got to get to a point in your life where you say, God, you are in control. God, I'm putting you in the driver's seat. God, you step in and show up. God, you step in and meet me at my point of need. Can I get some help to help me rock the service on home today? But I can praise God that in spite of everything that I'm going through, God is a present help. He is a present help in a time of trouble. He is a way maker. He is a deliverer. He is a Lord of sharing. He is a lily of the valley. He's the brightest morning star.
the buck stops now. Poverty is done. We thank God for blessing our posterity. We thank you for your favor being shown upon our lives. Father, I speak peace to the bloodline today in the name of Jesus. Everybody lift your hands for a moment. You know things that have been plaguing your bloodline. It ends today. Premature death. It ends today. Miscarriages. It ends today. Yes, yes, yes. It ends, it ends today. Hallelujah. You went through so others don't have to go through. You got a testimony of deliverance. You got a testimony of freedom. Father, thank you for every person that's represented their bloodline today. Father, thank you for breaking the curses today. Father, thank you for giving us a change of mindset in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you right now that things that have whooped us before will not whip us and torment us no more. Father, we forgive ourselves on today for places where we have failed. Father, we thank you that you said that you have come that we might have life and that we have life more abundantly. There's one in here today you're not saved and you want to be saved. I offer a risen Savior to you today. I offer you the one that's able to help you turn your life around. I offer the one to you that helped clean me up. Hallelujah. Places where I failed. Places where I've been a disappointment. I'm not a disappointment no more. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I said, God, I said, clean my life up so that when people say that they're connected to me, they'll be able to be proud to say that they're connected to Christopher Allen more Senior. I asked God to clean me up so that I wouldn't be a disgrace. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for these, your people in here today. If you're watching us via live stream and you're not saved, you want to be saved, press up one in the comments. You want to walk with God, you're no longer in right standing, you want to renew your commitment, press a two in the comments. I want to pray for you personally. Thank you, Jesus. All you got to do is just drop the number, and I'm going to reach out to you today, and I'm going to minister to you. When everybody repeat this prayer after me, Lord Jesus, thank you for sending your son to die on the cross for my sins. Thank you that he didn't stay there, but he got up with all power in his hands. I confess Jesus Christ as the Lord of my life. Come into my heart. Shake me and mold me for your glory. And I'll forever praise you and magnify you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. When you break that prayer, I'm telling you, your past is already behind you. Your record has been clean. Hallelujah, you are a new creation in Christ. There is therefore no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. The fact that you, you can admit that I need help. Hallelujah. God is ready to step in. And now since you prayed that prayer, he's stepping in to meet you right at your point of need. But we love you. We thank God for you. Hallelujah.